Thank you for listening to this St. Louis on the Air podcast brought to you by Lindenwood University's Hammond Institute for Free Enterprise. Examining market approaches to help solve economic and social issues, Hammond.Institute. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Don Marsh. You may remember our introducing you to Gone Sec last spring. She's a young Italian citizen who came to this country as a youngster, learned our language, and graduated last year as a class valedictorian at Riverview Gardens High School. Achievements in academics and music won her a full scholarship to Washington University. Arts and culture reporter Nancy Fowler covered Gone last year and now has a postscript. I sat down with Nancy yesterday and noted that Gone's run into something of a roadblock at school. Yeah, so when I met with her after she'd started her classes, she said everything was going great. But then a story began to come out about her dental issues and her working full time, more than full time, really, to to pay for those and um, how she was struggling mightily to make this all work. And the dental issues are significant. They are. She um, had a cavity when she was 12. When she lived in Italy, the family immigrated here. The cavity was never filled. And out throughout middle and high school, she lived with a lot of pain and could only eat soft foods. And it hurt to play um, some of her, inst- her musical instruments. And so she herself found a dentist. She says her family just didn't have any money for dental care, and she's not a U.S. citizen, so there was no public assistance. So... Um, she found a dentist last May, right around graduation time. She was a valedictorian. And that dentist said that she had the worst decay he'd ever seen. Right. Yeah, it was really significant, and losing bone mass and infections. The potential there was for thousands of dollars in bills, so she had to go to work, and she found a job. She did. Um, she works at Panda Express in St. Anne up to 60 hours a week sometimes, just, you know, to pay her dental expenses and also help her family out a little bit. And this is what happened when uh, she met a fellow student uh, in the elevator. He was just making a joke like, hey, will you bring me orange chicken next time? Um, Making a reference to Panda Express where I work. And I was just laughing along. And then um, he said to me, why do you work anyway? You're supposed to enjoy college right now. And I'm like, I have things to pay for. And he said, so why don't you just ask your parents? And I was like, that's just a privilege I do not have. So it just is it's just like a harsh reality here. A lot of the students, not all, obviously, but a lot of the students um, have things like that. They've never really had to um, hold a part-time job while in school because all it took for them is to let their family know that they needed something. That's very telling in so many ways, isn't it, Nancy? Yes, it is. Um, She is one of just 15% of low-income first-generation students there, and the median income for um, families that send their kids to WashU is um, around $270,000. She does live a different existence than many of her peers. With all of this, uh, as I understand it from your story, um, it had an impact on her grades, and I know that's something very important to her. Yes, absolutely. I mean, as we said, she was the valedictorian of her high school, something like 4.5 uh, average, taking all you know AP classes, takes great pride uh, in her grades and her work ethic. Um, and, and I want to just say, I haven't really mentioned the specifics of the, the causes of her dental pain, but currently she needs... Um, two root canals, two implants, and fillings in almost every tooth. And those decaying teeth, those decaying teeth are just getting worse. My, my understanding is, correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, she's already spent $5,000 on the work that's been done, and another 13000 is necessary to, uh, to finish the job. Yeah, those are kind of the, the figures we came up with when she was like just sort of trying to remember what she spent on what and how much and how much it is going forward, but it's a lot of money, yeah. She's been pretty private about this, hasn't she? She has, very yeah. much so. Let's, yes. find, let's find out why. I don't really want it to be seen as an excuse. I don't really want it to be seen as me asking for them to be lenient on me or to treat me any differently. I, I know that this is something I have to go through, but I don't want that to make me any less of a student than anyone else. That's Goni Sack from Washington University. Yes, I'm uh, so she's talking about not telling her professors in that clip. Is she getting any help? Is any help available to her to offset some of these costs? Um, 
Well, she's started um, a process. Um, she did tell her academic advisor, uh, I think November, so several months into the school year, and she says the academic advisor um, thought that a, an organization called Wash U Cares might be able to help her, but then they came to find out that because she's not a U.S. student that that wasn't going to work, and they've directed her to the, the International Students Association. What is that? Um, it's an organization that supports um, international students, of, of which she is one because she's a citizen of another country. However, she's been in this country since the seventh grade. Well, the citizenship issue is an issue in this, isn't it? Um, yes. I mean, according to what WashU told her, it, it's also been an issue because she's not eligible for um, Medicaid or other public assistance. So that's the reason that her dental needs have gone unattended, you know, all during her adolescence. Yeah. She was uh, she was born in Italy, and she maintains the Italian citizenship. Yes, that's right. And she that's what's uh, kind of an obstacle to, to all of this. Yes, yes. Is she in danger of losing that scholarship? Well, she says she didn't, she said she was very disappointed in her grades. She didn't want to tell me what they were. She ended up auditing one class and, and the, the three others were not what she had hoped for. But she says that as long as she maintains a 2.0, that she'll be okay. And she says because of the summer sessions that she's been to and done well in, that that's the case, that she's maintaining that. She's cut back a little bit on her working schedule to uh, accommodate the studies. Yes. So this semester in January, she uh, just made a hard decision to cut back to working 30 hours, which is, you know, still quite a bit. But uh, she already feels the pressure release, even as she worries that she won't be able to save up enough money in enough time to address the dental needs because of this, this cutting back of work hours. What has the school's response, if any, uh, been? In the past few years, Washington University has made an effort to increase their socioeconomic diversity of their student body, and they are enrolling 14, 15 percent of these students as opposed to 6 percent. And so in an effort to help those students, they launched a, an Office for Student Success in 2016, which serves like 358 students. But uh, when I talked to um, Assistant Provost Anthony Tillman, he said it is still up to the individual student to ask for that help. And, you know, they were, they were pretty... Uh, pretty firm on that. And then when I was talked to uh, Harvey Fields, who's a, a dean there, he said, I said, are you doing, you know, all you can for these students? He said, we're, we're doing all we know. Yeah. Whether we're doing all we can, I don't know, because we're still learning. You can't see a dental problem, so the student would have to speak up that there is a problem, so they would know about it. Uh, yes, that's what they're saying. Yeah. Your piece uh, has already aired in sdlpublicradio.org. Um, has there been any kind of public response? Yes. Um, I received several emails this morning. Um, there's been questions on uh, Twitter about how how to help. Uh, I got an email from a, a, a dentist, um, as well as people just wanting to help however they can. Throughout all of this, I mean, she's a remarkable young lady. Throughout all of this, she has maintained a, an attitude that is really to be admired. Yes, absolutely. She's definitely, you know, got the positive attitude. Well, she is looking forward to, uh, to her future life with great positivity, as we'll hear. I could have simply just said, I can't, I can't do school. I, I have to pay for my medical expenses. I have to help my family. I have to do all of this. But I didn't let that stop me because I knew that it's temporary. At the end of the day, all of our obstacles are temporary, no matter... No matter how big, no matter how small, they're all temporary. That's what we have to tell ourselves so that we can push past them. So I hope that that's the biggest thing that people take away from it, just to be strong enough to push through the temporary until they get to their permanent destination, which is the better and the bigger picture. Goni Sek, do you have any, any doubt, Nancy Fowler, that this young woman is going to persevere and work her way through all of these current problems? I do not have any doubt. I believe if anyone can do it, that she can. And she has a goal of if she did have more time right now, she would form a team of WashU students to mentor high schoolers like those at Riverview Gardens where she went. Quite a remarkable young lady. Yes. St. Louis Public Radio arts and culture reporter Nancy Fowler. As we mentioned, this story has received interest from listeners who want to know how they can help, and we are directing those people to contact Washington University's Office for Student Success. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio 90.7 KWMU. Thank you for listening. I'm Don Marsh.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.